Welcome to Digital Asset News to get top stories in cryptocurrency digital assets and break them down to bite-sized pieces. Today, a lot of stuff to go over. Let's break right in. So first up, Wall Street veteran says many people will turn to Bitcoin after Labor Day. This is a very interesting story because the gentleman who's going to speak, first of all, has a wealth of information on the traditional stock market, but also it's because he was against Bitcoin and now it looks like he's converted. So as time goes on, it looks like this is going to happen more and more. Also, Warren Buffett will buy Bitcoin soon, says Morgan Creek's Jason Williams. This is a piggyback on another article which talks about how Warren Buffett is getting out of the stock market in some way, shape or form and getting his investments into gold. Also, Kraken is going to list Polkadot this week. And lastly, we'll go over question of the day, which is uphold and their 65 day asset hold policy. So before we get that, let's take a look at what's going on with the market. So I got to tell you on the weekend, usually we see dips, but uh, not this one. Looks like it's doing pretty good. I thought Bitcoin was going to hit 12,000, uh, but here we are sitting at just below 11.9 and it's down by 0.3%. But again, uh, Bitcoin has done a tremendous rally as a lot of other uh, altcoins have as well. So Ethereum looking pretty sharp, 431. XRP, 29 cents, watch out. Ugh. Tether, a dollar. Chainlink is at a solid 19, so pretty good. And again, I uh, <clears throat> thought it actually would hit 20, but uh, here we are at 19. Still pretty happy about that. Bitcoin Cash, 304. Cardano uh, up point or down 0.7. Bitcoin SV, still in the top 10. Don't understand. Litecoin, uh, I can see that, 2.9%. Uh, Binance Coin, Tezos, uh, 3.9, 4.2. Tron, congratulations to all you Tron holders. I used to hold Tron uh, a while ago in 2017, 2018 got rid of it didn't really see the whole point but uh if you've been holding this whole time hey tip of the hat good job to you and then uh, that's pretty much it uh, not too many uh, huge historical moves ave as far as DeFi going up 10 10 so that's pretty good and uh bat for some reason basic attention token wow 14 and percent and omg is right for omg network 56 percent nice little pump going on there so let's break into today's top story so first up wall street veterans says many people will turn to bitcoin and he gives a specific day uh, after Labor Day. It's pretty amazing. But it's not just what he says here. Really what he's saying is if they're going to do that uh, after Labor Day, which is in September, uh, you need to start making your moves now. So what's going on here? So Wall Street veteran George Ball, a former crypto skeptic, explained why he believes that many wealthy investors and traders will be looking at Bitcoin after Labor Day. And look, we just saw one of the um, most famous wealthiest investors warren buffett say he's going to get into gold which he has never done before him and his partner charlie munger never done that before and here they are so if they're talking about gold what do you think is going to happen with the rest of the stock market but we'll get into that in a bit george ball currently serves as chairman and ceo of sanders morris harris which is a privately owned duly registered broker dealer and ria firm established in 87. he started his career as a stockbroker ef hutton uh, was president uh, between look at this 1977 and 82. he left hutton in july became the ceo of prudential box securities labor later renamed to prudential security so this guy uh, has been around the block, we'll just say. Moving down, Kitayama was the interviewer, and he started the inter interview by asking Ball why he thinks that now is the time for people to take a look at their portfolios and potentially make some adjustments. And he talks about the summer doldrums and how things are going, but this is what was interesting. He says, COVID will be with us through the first quarter of the next year, and then there will be a vaccine. As if he just knows it, like, oh, it's going to be, you know, the, the first quarter. He states the market's waiting for a new spark, and that spark's likely to come in, into ignition, as it often does, right after Labor Day. So the time to reposition the portfolio is before everything blows up, which is right now. So if you are in this space, uh, you've seen um, exponential growth over the last two, three weeks. Um, I got to tell you, this would have been the time to really uh, invest. Actually, it wasn't this time. It was in March when everything went down the tubes. That was the time to get in, was before. But I still see a, a, a tremendous amount of growth or there's a lot of upswing coming uh, this way. Anyhow, this is where it gets interesting. Uh, Kadiyama then asked Ball what assets other than equities people should be let looking at. And Ball said, before I read it, I just want you to hear it from the horse's mouth. So this is what Ball actually said in the interview. Well, George, what assets should investors get into, say, outside of equities? I've never said this before, and I've always been a, a blockchain, cryptocurrency, Bitcoin opponent. Uh, but if you look right now, the government can't stimulate the markets forever. The liquidity flood will end. Um, and sooner or later, the government's got to start paying for it. 
some of the stimulus for some of the deficits for some of the, the well-deserved, very smart subsidies that it's providing to people. Are they going to raise taxes that high? Or if not, are they going to print money? If they print money, uh, that debases the currency. And probably even things like tips, treasury, inflation, protected securities can be corrupted. So the very wealthy investor or the trader uh, probably turns to Bitcoin or something like it uh, as a staple. Wow, I never thought I'd hear you say that. I mean, we heard Jamie Dimon talk about Bitcoin before. And yeah, that's that's it. So I mean, it's pretty interesting uh, when he talks about it because there's some people who believe in the uh, modern monetary theory, which or MMT, where you can just you know have helicopter money and it doesn't really matter, but it matters. I mean, in some way, shape, or form, it's going to matter. There is no free lunch, and I think at some point taxes are going to be raised. There is going to be, uh, I mean, even they could still actually print more money, but at some point you have to pay the piper. And I think what these investors are looking at, especially somebody like Warren Buffett, is like, hey, uh, I don't know what's going to happen later on down down the road, but there's only so much liquidity we can inject into the stock market before people are like, what the heck is going on? Maybe that is a bubble, and they're going to look for safe haven assets. And I think Bitcoin is one of those. So. I got to tell you, in my opinion, new savings account for this world is gold, silver, and Bitcoin. But uh, I could be wrong. Let me know what you think in the comment section. But before we move on, let me say this. I had always said that I believe that Bitcoin would do, or digital assets and cryptocurrencies in general, will do very well as long or for an extended period of time, uh, they would reach new highs if the economy still stayed in a downturn, if there was different problems with um this pandemic if different things because people would rush to it but now with what ball was talking about here i can see how it doesn't really matter now it doesn't matter because everything has been set in motion uh months and really if you think about it even years ago all the different things that are going on right now are economic policies that are going to uh, in some way for, uh, fail and it's going to lead us into what bitcoin can actually do which is a which is not a any kind of soft money it is a hard asset it is deflationary and it can do a lot of different things that uh, the economic policy here for not just the united states but globally uh, can't fix but again uh, only time will tell Let's move on to the next article. Warren Buffett will buy Bitcoin, says Morgan Creek's Jason Williams. And this wasn't so much about you know him buying uh, you know gold and going into Bitcoin, but just Warren Buffett getting into gold is amazing to me. So on Friday, it was reported on several major news outlets that American billionaire uh, Warren Buffett's company, Berkshire Hathaway, bought, <laughs> this is weird, 21 million shares of Barrick Gold worth 563 million. This is something investors like Buffett, known as value investors, have never done before. According to Morgan Free partner Jason Williams, Bitcoin is the next thing for Buffett to score and he will buy it soon. And it was just like what Ball was talking about. Investors are going to look into some kind of safe haven assets. So if you got somebody like Buffett and he's going into gold, the next obvious choice that he can do is go into digital gold, which would be Bitcoin. Is he going to do it? I have no idea, but I can tell you it would only make sense to me, especially if, he's, if, if he takes a look at it, what has been the highest performing asset class in the last decade and it has been uh, Bitcoin and to a lesser extent, Ethereum as well. So uh, it'll be interesting to see. Anyhow, moving on. Going to report by Forbes, the decision to buy the shares may have been inspired by a close and painstaking monitoring of gold's performance in the charts, which Buffett and his partner, Charlie Munger, may have found interesting. I would believe they did. And now he talks about uh, Bitcoin Maxi, Max Kaiser, which he explained that the uh, billionaire's involvement with gold will spill over as Bitcoin is considered to be many uh, digital gold, which Exactly what I said. Global, he states, global 100 trillion fund management, biz, is less than 1% invested in gold. With Buffett's now moving into gold, expected global allocation of 5% AU minimum implies $5,000 per gold. Expect a 1% Bitcoin global allocation. Remember that again. Expect a 1% Bitcoin global allocation, which is $1 trillion. This implies $50,000 for Bitcoin. Expect PTJ ups to 10%. So I got to tell you, all those different uh, gold bugs out there and they're talking, hey, congratulations, gold's at an all-time high. But I got to tell you, I understand why they are they talk uh, negatively about Bitcoin. It's because Bitcoin is going to eat their lunch. And just to take a look 
at how much wealth there is just in gold, which is pretty interesting. If you take a look at, this is one I, sh I show a lot, it's the Money and Markets. It was just published on May 27th, just more than three months ago. And you can just see that this little square is worth 100 billion. So here's silver at a paltry 43 billion dollars, okay? Here's crypto at 244. Uh, now it's uh, another 100 billion, so a little bit more. Military spending, budget deficit, coins and banks, Fed's balance sheet, which is way higher, I'm sure. Here's billionaires, here's these guys, good for them. And here's gold. So gold right now is looking at almost $11 trillion. So how much do you think, if you just take 10%, just 10%, uh, and you put it into Bitcoin, there's your trillion. That's pretty much it. I mean, 1.1 1 .1, uh, trillion if you want to be, uh, you know, math wise. But yeah, that's just, that's, first of all, that's just gold. That's just gold. Now, if you want to take a look at uh, other types of places where you can get this type of money, here's the Fortune 500. Look at Microsoft, Apple, Amazon, and Facebook, and Google, how much they have. That's a lot of money. Here's stock markets, 89 trillion. Global money supply, which 7% is physical, I might add, 90% non-physical. And I don't really care about the rest of the stuff. The, the one that always gets me is this one right down here called derivatives. Because in derivatives, uh, in, at the low end, it's 558 trillion. And on the high side, it could be what's called one quadrillion, which I didn't know that number even existed until I saw this, this visualization. So if we start to talk about you know how early we are, uh, my friends, we are uh, unbelievably super early if we're talking about cryptocurrency uh, so if you think that uh, it can't go up uh, i beg you to differ and lastly to finish this up it states if he eventually buys bitcoin it will be a dream come true for the crypto space and may mark the beginning of a new era for the industry at large and i gotta tell you uh warren buffett's from omaha i'm from omaha my brother still lives there and uh, i was back there about a month ago and he was telling me about his uh, investment in a visa, which he had uh, done he's now for ten for ten years. And he was he was talking to me about how he doubled his uh, his uh, investment. And I was like, uh, "Are you are you bragging or are you complaining? I don't know what you're talking about." He goes, "Yeah, yeah, I, you know, I, I doubled in a decade." I'm like, "Jesus, crime any Christmas!" I go, "That's just that just happened to me like a month ago." I go, you, "You know, you really should take a look at this stuff." He's like, "That's ridiculous. There's no one who who's going to get in that." I'm telling you right now. I'm telling you right now. If Warren Buffett comes out and says in any way, shape, or form that he's doing anything with cryptocurrency digital assets, you will see this market explode because you've got people like my brother who follow that guy like he is some kind of god. And uh, let me tell you, once they figure it out of what's going on behind the scenes, it'll be a powder keg. Just my opinion. Let me know what you think in the comments section. Let's move on. Next up, Polkadot's coming to Kraken, and that's going to happen on August 18th. So I got a little email, which is always interesting. And they say, hey, Polkadot's coming, and uh, this is a big thing. And I'm like, what the heck's Polkadot? So I've heard a lot of people in the uh, in the comment section say, hey, have you, have you taken a look at Polkadot? Look at Polkadot. And it was the same thing with like Voyager. Uh, people were like, have you taken a look at Voyager? Look at Voyager. When I hear the same thing over and over again, like I can see, I can hear uh, somebody say, hey, we looked at potato foot and I'll, a potato foot coin or tomato coin. And I'm like, okay. And I never hear about it again. But this polka dot has been like the, the thing that I keep hearing again and again and again. So first of all, I have to ask myself, well, what the heck is polka dot? So there's two things that really stuck out of me. One was scale and how it was able to scale. So blockchains and isolations can only process a limited amount of traffic, which is true. That's one of the problems with scaling up certain blockchain types of projects. Polkadot is a sharded, sharded, sharded multi-chain network, meaning it can process many transactions on several chains in parallel, eliminating the bottlenecks that occurred on all the other ones. So this, when they start talking about sharding, well, that's competing directly with Ethereum and Cardano's Hydra. So that's very interesting right out the bat. Next one, it talks about specialization. When it comes to blockchain architecture, one size doesn't fit all. All blockchains make trade-offs to support different features. One chain might optimize for identity management, while another might optimize for file storage. On Polkadot, each blockchain can have a novel design optimized for a specific use case. And this one is competing directly with IBM's permission blockchain because they are going for those huge conglomerates, those huge entities for those privatized blockchains because they're going to specialize. But now with Polkadot, they can, they, they can come in and go, look, we do the same thing and we have a better product. So interesting to see what could happen. Now going even farther, just so you know, Polkadot is now live. Great for that. There's interoperability, which we just talked about. Uh, blockchain innovation. Again, create a custom blockchain in minutes. It's pretty interesting. And this this part was what got me forkless and future proof. Polkadot can upgrade 
without hard forks to integrate new features or bug or fix bugs. And I, I, I thought about it, I go, well, there's been other ones, uh, same thing with like EOS. They had talked about the same thing, but there was a problem. However, this one's pretty interesting because it talks about Polkadot as a sophisticated governance system with, where all stakeholders have a voice. So they're going to be able to vote on where the direction of the chain actually goes. So these are the little things that I know about Polkadot. I am interested to see how it all works out. Uh, as far as like the price itself on CoinGecko, right now you were looking, this one is below the top 100, I believe. Amazingly, it is 300, almost three, it was, it's about 350. It's about 350 for one Polkadot, why? Well, if you take a look at the circulating supply, it has a maximum of only 10 million. So that's interesting. However, does that mean it's going to take off? Well, it has a very low supply. So when you have supply and demand, and I believe this is going to have a huge demand when it goes live, we will actually see. I will tell you this though, as far as getting able to actually purchase Polkadot, good luck with that. Here are the exchanges that I see. I even took a look at Uniswap and it's not there. So I'll be taking a look at this project later on to see how it all goes. But I can just tell you as before it gets listed on Kraken, I expect the price to go up massively. Then when it gets listed to drop again, just like all cryptocurrencies do. Interesting project, but not in my plan. All right, let's move on. Next up for Q of the day, this is a pretty good uh, statement and question. And it was posed to me by RDNZL and it's all about uphold and 65 day asset holds. So let's jump in the office. Okay, and welcome everybody uh, it's back to the office. And we're gonna go over the question of the day, uh, which is from RDNZL7393. Don't have a name, just have an email. And uh, it's, a, it's a comment and a question all rolled in at one. It says, hey, Rob, uh, this week you had a question from a viewer about Voyager policies, and I thought you might be interested to know about a new policy for ACH. ACH are automated, automated clearinghouse uh, purchases. So when you connect your bank uh, to an exchange, you can do what's called ACH. You can transfer funds uh, automatically, or you can do it uh, via debit card or a credit card or a wire. Just depends on your particular exchange and how it's actually being offered. But for what she's talking about here is ACH for uphold. So she says, or he or she says, uh, for ACH purposes at uphold and perhaps update your exchange spreadsheet. ACH purchases are now being held by uphold for 65 days before you are allowed to transfer them off their exchange. And when I first read this, I'm like, I got to read that again. It doesn't make any sense. Didn't sound right. But three times, four times, like, okay, I get it now. Let's see what's going on. So uh, they say the purchases are cleared for trading immediately with other assets on the platform, but their market rates are from an alter alternate dimension, <laughs> apparently, because they are nowhere near our actual market rates. Okay. So the only way to get your assets prior to 65 days of uphold is to use a credit card or debit, which we just talked about. Uh, I can't believe they made this policy change. 10 days is the longest period that I had experienced so far. Customer service has only replied with canned responses quoting the policy, which that's usually what we do now. Uh, for everybody who has customer service for their businesses, it's just canned responses, which kind of sucks. I get away from that, try to do answer as many questions as I possibly can myself, but uh, it is what it is. So uh, then she, he or she says, thanks for suggesting Voyager, sign up, signed up, it's going great. Okay, so first of all, we have to verify everything, right? Never assume things are what they say they are. Uh, do your own research, right, and do your due diligence. So I took a look at um, Uphold. Let's take a look at um, the actual um, the FAQ section. And I found this. It says, how fast can I trade funds deposited from my U.S. bank account? Uh, starting August 13th, you can trade ACH deposits instantly on Uphold, which means you can buy Bitcoin XRP uh, uh, without the four to seven day cool down period. For people who want to get into fast moving cryptos quickly, the change is a massive leap forward. Um, so great, I believe that. You can withdraw an ACH deposit to your originating bank account after three business days once the funds have settled. However, and this is the big one, you can withdraw ACH funds to external networks such as crypto wallets or send to other users on the platform after 65 days. That is exactly uh, right from um, the actual website from Uphold. So uh, what I did is, uh, I mean, the, the, the statement is, is a statement. The question was, can you update your exchange uh, list? And of course, so in the description of every one of my videos, there is a link. It's going to look like this. And this link is going to uh, send you to a Google spreadsheet, which has all the information that I've collected for all the different exchanges and wallets that 
I have used, am currently using, and will not use. And I go over everything as far as like the uh, interest rates, the fees, uh, how it all works, if I recommend it or not. I talk about my one-two punch, Voyager and Celsius. I know some people, I mean, a lot of people love Voyager uh, and some people hate it. Uh, they say, ah, it's, it's this and that. Um, but, you know, I guess it just comes down to your, your personal experience. I have nothing but a good experience. And then now that I hear about Uphold, uh, I'm like, well, that's kind of a bummer. So 65 days is quite a long time. So I put that response in there and I also put a link to that particular page uh, so people can find it. And uh, when they have questions, it'll, it'll just be right there for them. So uh, that is the question of the day. I'm glad uh, someone actually uh, is updating me on these things because I cannot imagine uh, 65 days. It seems like a tremendous amount of time. All right, so that's it for today. Uh, let's, ju let's jump back. All right, and that's it. So thanks a lot for sticking with me on a Sunday. Just want to say uh, thanks to uh, everybody who has joined up. Uh, well, I have a join now button underneath. It doesn't really get you anything special. You don't get anything, uh, you know, fantastic. It's like a tip. It's a dollar ninety-nine, and uh, these people sign up just as a way of showing thanks. So I say, great. I'll do random shout outs. So I want to do random shout outs to the new ones. Uh, Jesse Kirkland, Lincoln Six Echo, William Howell, who's been around for a long time actually. Carlos Gomez, Droplet. Who else we got? Patrick Neal, Noel Flippin Vegas, been around. Jimmy G, Joe Griffin, Mary Yala, Yala, Timothy Dillon, and D Ropke. So thanks everybody, really appreciate it. If you like those types of videos, there's gonna be two that's gonna pop up in your left and right. I don't know what they are, because uh, YouTube has control over that. Uh, also, they have control over all the uh, ads you see. So if it was a scam uh, in the beginning, a scam ad, or a scam ad in the middle, or a scam ad after, uh, let YouTube know. They'd love to hear from you. And uh, that's it for today. So thanks a lot. Appreciate it. See you